My name is Carla Cabrera, and I am an international judge. I want to thank the Judge Committee of World Archery Asia for taking this initiative in holding an online judges' conference. Despite our current global situation with this pandemic, and there are hardly any physical competitions or possibilities where we can do actual judging, we judges still need to continue learning, improving our skills to become even better judges. And this conference is an avenue where we can do this. So I'm truly very happy to be with you. Now, I was tasked by the judge committee to talk on the philosophy of judging. Now, to begin, let's define two important words here that we have as a background. I want to start with judging. What is a judge? The dictionary defines the judge as a person appointed to decide in any competition, contest, or matter at issue. The judge is an authorized arbiter. He is one or she is one who is entrusted with decisions affecting others and implies particularly that one has qualifications and authority for giving decisions in matters at issue. So, judging means to act as a judge, pass judgment. In archery, the function of the archery judge at any tournament is to see that the tournament runs smoothly so that each and every competitor can achieve his or her best performance. Now, let's define that second word and its philosophy. According to the dictionary, it is the rational investigation of the truths and principles of being, knowledge, or conduct. It is a system of principles for guidance in practical affairs. So, this involves the whole person, your mind, your body, and your spirit. The basic philosophy for our judges is based on the words of the Olympic Oath for Officials. And I'd like to read that for you. On behalf of all judges and officials, I promise that I will officiate in these Olympic Games with complete impartiality, respecting and abiding by the rules which govern them in the true spirit of sportsmanship. Now, going by these definitions, we have a lofty responsibility. The way we carry out our function as a judge therefore involves our whole person, mind, which involves knowledge of the rules, body, that skills involving the performance of judge procedures, and spirit, values and attitudes you project as you apply the rules and procedures. Now, Let's go to the first guiding principle, and that involves knowledge of the rules. We have to know the basic shooting rules. We must know the rules thoroughly, including the bylaws and interpretations. That means we have to read the rules often. You know, it may be tedious and boring, I know, but if we are to be good judges, who can apply the rules fairly at all times, then this is non-negotiable. Now, I prepared here a slide for you that has links where you can download uh, the following. So feel free to take a snapshot of this slide. So the rule book, you can find it. You can download uh, the PDF file of the entire rule book on the WAA website, and uh, you have the link there. You can also find it on the WA website, where, aside from a book-by-book book download, you can view it online. You also have here on this slide links for the bylaws, interpretations, judge's guidebook, where you will find explanations of some rules, judge procedures, and other useful information. And then I also included for you uh, the archive for the judge's newsletter, where you will also find new judge procedures, interpretations, and bylaws. The latest newsletters contain a lot of important and useful information, such as the new judge procedures, not in the judge's guidebook, since the guidebook was published in 2018. For example, 
In issue 99, the new scoring procedure in the finals is detailed. Now, it's also important that we remember the important rules. Days before you go to a competition, part of your preparation should include a rereading and review of the rules, especially those that apply to the type of competition you will be judging, be it outdoor, indoor, target, field, 3D archery. The night before, go through the relevant rules and procedures that apply to the activity or round that will take place the next day. Be aware of changes. It's imperative that we all keep up to date so we are not applying old rules. Every year, there are new rules that come into effect, usually on the 1st of April, and the rule book is updated with a new version. Be sure that you review the updated version and not the previous rule book. I make it a point to check before I do a review if there is an updated rule book. You'll find the version here at the, the bottom left corner of the rule book. It is uh, date and time stamped so that you will know which version it is. So in my experience, these versions, they come around every twice a year. New bylaws come out roughly every six months and new interpretations are issued more often, like every month. Next, we, have, we should be able to refer to relevant rules. Know how the books are built up and their chapters so you know where to look for and refer to a particular rule. Now, book one is about constitution, eligibility code, code of conduct and ethics. Uh, it has Appendix 4 with the judges' organization, judges' accreditation, reaccreditation. Book 2 is all about events, championships, and competitions, the field of play setup for several kinds of rounds, safety in target archery and match play charts, and other things. Book 3 is all about target archery. Book 4 is on field and 3D archery. Book 5 um, is about miscellaneous archery rounds such as standard rounds, clout rounds, ski archery, run archery, etc. And book six is about the anti-doping rules. The rules are to be applied and not simply enforced blindly. We are judges and not policemen. A lot of common sense is involved here. So it's important to know the intention of a rule. Understand why the rule is there. Now, I came to observe in one of the competitions, uh, I was the chairman of judges, that we were doing the match play for the uh, team round. And the first team, let's call them Team A, Archer 1, came up to the shooting line from behind the one-meter line and started his uh, shooting. When he brought out his arrow from the quiver, an arrow got stuck with it, came out as well, and fell on the ground. But he continued his uh, shooting process. He shot the arrow and then left the shooting line, went back to the one-meter line, and the next archer, archer two, came and sh went to the shooting line to shoot. Now, the coach of the opposing team signaled the judge to call a yellow card. We all know that we cannot come in, or the archer cannot come into the shooting line with the arrow exposed out of the quiver. And uh, that was what the coach was trying to point out to the judge. But we must remember here, common sense. Whose arrow was that on the ground? Was it the archer who was going to shoot? You see, it's really, you have to know the intention of the rule. Now, it would not have affected anything. There would have been no advantage for that um, arrow to be out there. So fortunately, the judge did a good job and took no action. And the match continued without stopping. So if you want to know more about the intention of a rule, there are in every issue of the newsletter case studies of unusual or out of the ordinary judging situations that draw heavily on the intention of the rules to make a correct decision. It would be good to go through these to gain that common sense. Sometimes common sense is not so common. Now I'm going to talk about, well, I'm not going to talk much about skills, but just let me say, it basically involves the extension 
of the knowledge of the rules into actual practical application of those rules. These are skills such as handling uh, judge procedures like inspection of the venue and archer's equipment, overseeing shooting and scoring, conducting shoot-offs, acting as a line judge or target judge, and so on. These are skills. I want to go now to the values that we exhibit as we apply the rules. These values are taken from the World Archery Code of Ethics and Conduct, and that's in Book 1, Appendix 2. And this Code of Ethics and Conduct is based on the International Olympic Committee Code of Ethics that aims to preserve the highest possible ethical values that govern world archery, its officers, and the entire world archery family, including us judges. And when we talk about ethical values, we are talking about integrity. A person with integrity adheres to moral and ethical principles. That means a person of integrity exhibits independent behavior. What do I mean? We don't compromise our integrity by accepting orders or being influenced in our decisions by our relationships with so-called outsiders, with, say, our national associations, or we take any forms of bribery. We all have a nationality. Although we basically look upon judges as neutral international judges, we try to avoid situations that may create a presumption or a perception that the nationality of a judge could influence the result. Therefore, we must see to it that international judges are not judging in matches where their own countries are involved. You know, perception is really very important. Then uh, we give fair treatment of everybody and safeguard the dignity of every person. We don't discriminate between participants on the basis of race, gender, ethnic origin, religion, philosophical or political opinion, marital status, or any other grounds. We treat everyone politely and courteously, whether they're archers, team officials, organizers, the media, even the field crew. We don't lord it over everyone or anyone, because we serve the competition. Of course, as a judge, we base our judgment in accordance with the rules and procedures laid down. We take a protective attitude. What do we mean? We are protective when we make our judgments. We give the benefit of the doubt in making, for example, an arrow call, if after looking on both sides of an arrow at the correct angle, and you are still unsure of the value of an arrow, then you give it the higher value. We try to save archers' points, unless the rules say differently. Don't just open the rule book to see if you can find a penalty to take away an archer's score. Look instead in the book to find a rule, if possible, to save the athlete's score. Maintain fairness in your judgment. If the athlete has broken a rule that could give him an advantage over the other competitors, such as in distance, time, number of arrows, score, then you must take firm and immediate punitive action. This is to protect the rights of the other archers who did not break the rule. Then we have hearsay. Don't rely on what the archers say but rely on the physical evidence. For example, an archer may say she shot a pass-through arrow, and that alleged arrow completely passed through in the ten ring. What do we do as a judge? Do we believe this archer right away and, and give the value of the arrow as a ten? No, you know that very well. First, check if there is really an arrow behind the target. If there is, then see where and how it lies on the ground. Is it way behind the targets and could possibly be a missed arrow and not a pass-through? Examine the arrow, especially the veins, the fletches. Is it in pristine condition or does it look crumpled or damaged? If the evidence points to a pass-through, then check the target face for any unmarked hole. You get the drift? 
make an informed decision based on the physical evidence and not on mere hearsay. Now, creating trust. How do we create trust? We create trust and credibility when we show a good grasp and understanding of the rules as we apply them in the course of our judge duties. We perform our duties confidently and with determination, not hesitation. When you make an arrow call, be firm. The arrow is a 10. And, and don't go like, um, I think the arrow is a 10. Be confident in your decision. We give information clearly. We must possess a good command of the English language so that we can be understood. We each apply the judging procedures in the way it is outlined for us so we have a level of consistency across tournaments wherever it is held in the world. This is the main purpose of the judge's guidebook so as to have consistency in judging worldwide, maintaining fairness of the competition, and ensuring the shooting procedures will be the same throughout the entire world. Archers know, especially the very experienced international archers, if the judge is applying the proper procedure. The simple use of the magnifying glass in making arrow calls, that has a proper procedure. I have had some archers come to me and report that a judge did not use the magnifying glass to find out the value of the arrow. Or that judge looked through the magnifying glass on just one side. We have to look on both sides, on two sides, at the right angle. Then, wear your uniform neatly and look smart. Wear it only when you are on duty. Don't wear it to the bar after the day's competition. You know, bring a change of clothes if you plan to do this. I put a picture here, just for comic relief, to check if you are still awake. This judge is uh, Roy Cortez. He's an international judge candidate. And I put him in charge of the two-way radios. And this is how he collected them. So he looks smart, doesn't he? Okay, but that's not part of the uniform. Okay, let's go on. Keep yourself physically fit. We have a physical standard. Keep yourself physically and mentally fit. Eat right, sleep enough, exercise regularly. Judges are on the field far longer than any individual athlete. Most are assigned duties through many events and rounds during the whole day. While an archer is done when her category or his category is finished. Now, be cooperative. Confer with other judges. Consultation with other judges before making a decision does not indicate weakness, only a desire to make an absolutely correct decision. It is far easier to prevent a wrong decision than to correct a wrong decision. Okay? So a judge commission, a judge commission meetings before and during an event, they are also very important areas for bringing up uncertainties. Those judge uh, meetings are very important. Confer with the DOS or the director of shooting, especially in matters involving timing or there is a malfunction of the timing system, the light system, the countdown clock. Inform or confer with team captains. Communicate with team captains, please, and not the athletes directly when you need to pass on information. Let them know if there are concerns. Advise media personnel positively. Be polite in handling them. I know sometimes they are a nuisance, but they are helping to promote our sport. Now, in your reactions, avoid delay of the competition. Resolve issues right away and keep things moving. Reply to questions. Judges should be well-informed, willing to discuss and to educate if necessary. Keep alert and focused during the team match. For that matter, for any match or any part of the competition that you are on duty, 
the action is very fast. In fact, you must stay focused and not allow your mind to wander while on duty. Too much, I've seen this so many times. Too many judging mistakes happen when the judge is not focused. Stay calm. Control your emotions. Sometimes we have to deal with very aggressive, high-strung, and even rude team officials and athletes. Control your temper. Maintain your cool. Keep a firm position as you apply the rules fairly. If appropriate and time allows, take a few minutes to diffuse the tension. Smile. Relax. And finally, in the fulfillment of our duties, we maintain loyalty to the rules, loyalty to the duties of being a judge, loyalty to decisions made by other judges. Remember, the Tournament Judge Commission is a team. We are a team. Even if we don't agree with a judge's decision, we don't make a public fuss about it. We keep it in the Judge Commission. Or even if a judge makes a mistake, we don't talk about it outside of the Commission with other people. Your chairman will handle this and bring it up with the proper authorities. Always strive to improve your judging technique. There is always room for improvement. Observe experienced judges and learn from them. And of course, keep yourself updated on rules and procedures to effectively fulfill your duties. Remember, the guiding philosophy of judging is that your behavior should be a credit to archery, to World Archery Asia, to yourself, and to other judges. Be always mindful of the image you portray to competitors, spectators, officials, and the media, and act accordingly. So that's it. That's all the time we have. Thank you for your attention, and I hope this has been helpful and beneficial to you. See you on the field of play.